The first thing I'd like you to do is relax and make yourself as comfortable as possible. Take a deep breath and then let it all the way out. Next, I'd like you to pick out a spot on the wall or ceiling or wherever your gaze happens to fall. Focus your eyes on that spot without letting your gaze wander. You'll notice that this is an abnormal or unusual way of seeing because ordinarily we see by leaps and darts. When we are asked to focus our eyes on a spot without letting our gaze wander, our eyes tend to tire very easily. You may already be aware of the fact that the muscles in your eyes are beginning to tire, that your eyes tend to go out of focus. Perhaps you'll even notice that your vision becomes a little misty, a little blurred. Your eyes may burn a little bit, but I want you to continue to keep your eyes focused on the same spot you'll notice that this will become increasingly more difficult for you to do. Now let your eyes close and let the muscles of your eyes just relax. Let them relax to the point where they simply won't work. When you are sure that the muscles of your eyes simply won't work at all, test them. But don't test them to see if they will work because we know that you can open your eyes anytime you want. But test them to make sure that the muscles of your eyes are so completely relaxed that they won't work at all. When you're sure that they are completely relaxed, let the pleasant feeling of deep relaxation travel all the way down to the tips of your toes and relax. Each time you take a breath and let the air out, feel yourself relaxing deeper and deeper, feeling comfortably tired as you drift down deeper and deeper, relaxed. Please leave your eyes closed till this tape is over. I'll be asking you to visualize some scenes which can almost always be accomplished easier with your eyes closed. Now that you're in this pleasant, relaxed state and your mind is receptive, you'll find that you'll be able to easily learn to reprogram the way you think about food. You'll find that you'll be able to painlessly change some of your eating habits so that you will end up not only losing weight, but enjoying food perhaps more than you ever have. That may seem contradictory but I think as we move along and demonstrate how this can be done, you will end up agreeing that this is possible. We're going to begin by enjoying an imaginary meal. So I'd like you to picture yourself sitting down to a meal. I want you to visualize a plate in front of you containing a well-balanced, healthy, yet appealing meal. Though the portions are good sized, imagine that each portion is smaller than the serving size you might ordinarily put on your plate. We're going to go through this meal and demonstrate how you can enjoy the food more, feel completely full and satisfied, and still end up eating less. I want you to now imagine that you are preparing for your first bite, and in this preparation, you may have to cut something or slice something or if it isn't that kind of food just imagine that you're scooping down with a fork or a knife or whatever appropriate utensil you are using and you're bringing the first bite of food up to your mouth and as you put this first bite of food into your mouth you're going to concentrate on it. You're going to enjoy this bite of food thoroughly and completely. 
I want you to imagine yourself chewing the food and allowing that food to become chewed up quite thoroughly. And as you're chewing this food, you are aware of the taste sensations, the odor of the food, the sight of the food. It's delicious, even more so when you take time to savor each morsel. You're going to chew the food up slowly enough so that you will get the maximum enjoyment out of it. Now also, of course, food that is thoroughly chewed is more easily digested. So following the instructions should smooth the digestive process. I want you to imagine you're still chewing on that first bite, enjoying it, feeling it become more and more dissolved, liquefied, and the taste is still fresh in your mouth. Now, of course, you can swallow those portions that are ready to be swallowed. And meantime, while you're chewing, your hands are lying on your lap or on the table. The typical eating pattern consists of chewing one bite at the same time the next bite is being prepared. Then, even before that first bite of food is swallowed, another portion has usually gone into the mouth. So our hands and our mouth are typically going at a rather constant rate when we're eating. But we're changing that pattern here. We're practicing how to slow down the meal, yet enjoy it more. By this time, your first bite is completely gone. Your mouth is empty. Anytime you put a bite of food in your mouth, you will chew that bite up completely swallowing everything in your mouth. And when your mouth is completely empty, you may begin preparing for the next bite. The preparation may consist of scooping up food, cutting, or whatever. Now you're going to take your second bite. Using the appropriate utensil, pick up another delicious bite of food from your plate. Again, you're going to savor every morsel. Enjoy every last bit. You're raising your second bite to your mouth now, slowly, so you can enjoy the sight of it, the pleasant scent of it. And now you're putting the food in your mouth, and you're beginning to chew on your second bite. You're relishing the delicious taste of it and all the sensations connected with eating. Though you have eaten thousands of meals, when is the last time you really and truly tasted and enjoyed each and every bite? Have you ever gotten every last ounce of pleasure out of a meal as you are this one? You didn't know food could be so delectable, every tiny tidbit so pleasing to the palate. By slowing down the process of eating, you will get maximum enjoyment out of your food. Keep chewing up and enjoying your second bite while we go into some of the chemistry of eating. Before you eat, you may feel very hungry because you have a low blood sugar level and it takes probably some 10 to 20 minutes after your first bite before you start getting blood sugar level changes which would signal that you are less hungry. And so by slowing the meal down and yet enjoying it more, we have allowed time for the blood sugar level to become elevated enough so we can receive signals that we are less hungry because, oddly enough, the feeling of hunger is monitored and controlled more by blood sugar level than by stomach contractions. So by now you have completely chewed up and swallowed your second bite, or you may be finishing up with your last swallow now. Now you may begin to prepare your third bite. Your mouth is completely empty at this time as you cut or prepare and then begin to lift up your third bite to your mouth. This bite is a portion of food you haven't sampled yet this meal, but something you've been looking forward to. You look at it on the way up to your mouth, enjoying the color of the food, the texture, 
as your eyes feast on it. It's close enough now to smell the delicious aroma. And now in your mouth, the juices have been flowing in preparation for this delicious morsel. Once in your mouth, it hits your taste buds and you have tuned yourself up to experience this bite. So completely, you may even feel an exciting tingle up and down your spine. Eating like this, really enjoying your food, may well have added a strange new thrill to your life. You will no longer have those terrible guilt feelings about food, about the fact that you even have to eat at all. In the past, you may have felt so guilty about eating that you had to do it in secret and quickly. You may have gobbled your meals down too fast to ever enjoy them. But now, you're going to come out in the open as far as eating is concerned. And you're going to experience and enjoy the eating as you may never have before in your life. In fact, you're going to enjoy it so much you won't want to engage in any other activity while you are eating. You don't want to watch TV while you're eating. You don't want to read while you're eating. You don't want to stand up while you're eating. You don't want to do anything while you're eating except eat. And perhaps talk and carry on conversations with people, the people you know and love and friends but no other activity. You're finishing up on your third bite, swallowing the last tiny morsel. Go on now on your own. Take a few more slow, delicious bites as I review more of the principles that will help you think yourself into thinness. Now, back to why you will not want to carry on any other activity as you eat. By doing something else, such as watching TV while you're eating, you're not focusing on the food. You may barely be aware of eating. By doing something else while you're eating, you've watered down the process of eating. So therefore, by engaging in no other activity at mealtimes except eating, your mind's whole focus will be on the sensations of eating, so you will experience maximum enjoyment from every meal. From now on, when you sit down to watch TV, you won't automatically think of food because you will have broken the association chain. Many people who eat in front of the TV set or here or there in the house or while they're engaging in different activities, begin thinking whenever they're engaged in that activity that they need something to eat. Then they sit without knowing or observing what they're eating, just eating away, not enjoying the experience, just automatically eating. You've probably taken another couple of bites of your imaginary meal since that third delicious bite. And as you apply these principles to your daily meals, you'll be amazed at how quickly and with such small amounts of food, the feelings of hunger disappear, how rapidly a feeling of satisfaction begins to develop during each meal. Now let's take a jump. Imagine that you're halfway through this meal. The smaller than usual portions that you doled out for yourself are now just about half gone. Now you're taking another bite and it's probably getting a little easier for you to remember to just let your hands rest or be idle between bites. Now you're chewing that bite, enjoying it, savoring the food. You may notice that as you have increased your eating enjoyment, a feeling of satisfaction a feeling of partial fullness seems to be coming much sooner. Before, you probably had to eat large amounts of food before you began to feel satisfied. But you may have eaten these large amounts of food so rapidly 
that you didn't really experience the food. You weren't really aware that you had eaten. The food may have just passed quickly through your mouth, hardly noticed or tasted, down into your stomach. By eating this new way, your mouth, tongue, jaws, taste buds, sense of smell are all getting a nice workout. They're active, involved, and all these sensations will contribute to the feeling that, yes indeed, you have eaten. You have consumed an aromatic taste delight. By smelling the pleasing food aroma, by tasting each delicious morsel of food, you've had a complete eating experience. And now that you're more than halfway through the meal, your blood sugar level has already changed dramatically. It may have taken as long as 15 minutes for just the first half of your meal. But you have plenty of time to begin to really enjoy your food and allow your digestive system to work the way it should and signal you when you're full. Even now at the halfway point, enough food has gone through the system to have begun changing the blood sugar level. You're noticing a drop in your hunger level. You're not feeling completely full yet, but you're starting to feel quite comfortable, well on the way to being satisfied. Go ahead with the meal, slowly, bite by bite. When your mouth is empty, your hands move. When your hands move, it's only when your mouth is empty. Sitting and chewing with your hands idle means you have less to distract you from complete enjoyment of the food. There are many reasons to slow the meal down besides the fact that taking time to enjoy a meal is the more healthy and natural way to consume food. How many times have you been about 10 minutes into a meal and the phone rang? Perhaps not too often, but often enough to remember what happened. You got up from the meal a little irritated about the phone. You felt like you were still starving to death. You really resented the meal being interrupted. But you probably went to the phone. It might have been something kind of important. It might have taken about 10 or 15 minutes before you finished the call. You might remember how surprised you were when you got back to the dinner table to find you were no longer very hungry. In spite of the fact that when you got up from the table after just part of your meal, you were still famished. What happened? Some of the food that you had already eaten had begun turning into sugar. Some of this sugar had entered the bloodstream, which then increased the blood sugar level, which then signaled an area in the brain that since the blood sugar level was up, feelings of hunger were down. After that brief phone break, when you returned to the table, you felt more full. You may have even had trouble getting through the rest of the meal because you felt so full. This is the basic physiological factor we're going to take advantage of in this Thinking Thin program. By stretching out the time to eat a meal, as I have described, allows you to get maximum enjoyment from the meal. Yet, you will find that consuming perhaps only half the usual amount of food you eat in a meal will still result in your feeling completely full and satisfied. Now we're going to jump again to the end of the imaginary meal you've been enjoying. Before you finish this meal, once and for all, you're going to resign your lifelong membership in the Clean the Plate Club. How many people throughout their lives have been told, think of those starving children in some country or another. And for that reason, you're supposed to eat everything on your plate, no matter how fat you get. Your overeating is somehow supposed to do something for those starving children. We're going to quit the Clean the Plate Club because cleaning your plate is no longer a virtue. Many people have been rewarded with food for being good, 
and if you did like your parents told you, ate all of your dinner, you also very likely got rewarded with a nice fattening dessert. So even now, if you felt good or you wanted to just feel good, you may have developed the tendency to eat whenever you wanted to give yourself a reward. We're going to attack that basic thought process. How are we going to do that? We're getting close to the end of that imaginary meal now, but you will leave a little bit, perhaps one bite, of each of the food items on your plate. You're going to permanently turn in your membership to the Clean the Plate Club. You're saying by leaving a little bit of each food on your plate that when you're full, when you've had enough to eat, when you don't need any more food, and you're completely satisfied, you refuse to eat more just because it's there. Clean your plate was always the rule. You've grown up now. That's one rule you need obey no longer. You're swallowing the last thoroughly chewed portion of your last bite. And you actually do feel full. You know that you have eaten a meal. Now we're going to make one last jump. See yourself getting up from the table, looking down on the plate. You're leaving a bite or two of each of the foods you ate. You ate much less than usual, and yet you're completely content. You really feel satisfied. You're not stuffed, but you certainly feel like you have had enough to eat. And also, you enjoyed every morsel of that food, every tiny bite and swallow of it. And you did it with absolutely no guilt feelings whatsoever. Now, imagine you've settled into your favorite easy chair or couch to digest your delicious meal. As we finish up the little time remaining on this tape with a few more thinking thin suggestions. It is so easy to get in the habit of nibbling or snacking in front of the TV set or while reading or while doing any number of activities. Pretty soon, no matter what you're doing, if you have that habit pattern, it reminds you of food. We're going to break that chain. It's a chain of associations and thought processes that keeps you chained to the refrigerator. Eating and enjoying eating is so important that from now on, you will no longer water down eating by engaging in any other activity at the time you eat. The one exception is that you can enjoy visiting with and talking with your family or friends while you are eating. Also, from now on, pick that one area of your house where you will do all of your eating. It is so easy to get in the habit of thinking of food all over the house because we snacked or eaten everywhere. The eating spot you pick could be the kitchen table or the dining room table. Whatever spot you pick, you'll stick with it. You'll eat every bit of food you eat in your home in that same spot. Also, every item of food you eat, even if it's a snack, prepare the item ahead of time. What this means is, even if you're going to have a snack of cheese and crackers, decide how much you need right now to get you by until the next meal. You won't stand there at the cracker box with the cheese open. You'll first decide what you need. You take that many crackers, maybe two or three. That much cheese, maybe two or three thin slices. Put them on a plate. And after you have put all the food away, take your snack to your eating area. Sit down and then enjoy the snack. Don't gobble it down feeling guilty. Enjoy it slowly, bite by bite, just as we rehearsed for the meal. It turns out that snacking isn't such a bad thing to do. In fact, it's good to eat five or six times a day. Let's say that for you, you could lose weight eating 1,500 calories a day. It's a fact that if you eat those 1,500 calories over six meals a day, 
you would lose even faster than if you were to eat the 1500 calories in just three meals. There is something about the way the body processes food so that the same amount of food eaten over six meals will put on less weight than the same food taken in just three meals. So snacking isn't bad just as long as you don't snack on high calorie junk foods and then still eat your usual heavy meals and think you'll still lose weight. Keeping some kind of record or count of the calories you eat will probably be of quite a bit of assistance to you. Keeping track of calories will become particularly important if you're working on your program and find you're having trouble losing weight. It is likely that you could eat 1,200 to 1,400 calories a day and still have some really enjoyable experiences with food and still drop weight off at a very reasonable rate. This tape will end in just a few seconds, so now I'm going to count to five. When I reach five, open your eyes. One, two, rousing up a bit, three, four, becoming more alert, and five, your eyes are open.